Good morning, Langdale Church. It's my great privilege to welcome you uh, to this Easter uh, webcast. I'm very thankful uh, to be able to uh, film uh, this particular message uh, from uh, the church building uh, on Langdale Road. And I, I trust that as you uh, hear uh, the message and as you uh, receive uh, the instruction from God's word, that you will find it to be of help and encouragement to you. I'll give our reading, uh, which is from uh, John's Gospel, the 20th chapter, uh, beginning with verse 19. I'll lead us in a word of prayer, and then I will seek uh, to explain and illustrate and apply uh, the portion of God's word, uh, which I will read. So our reading is John chapter 20, beginning with verse 19 and continuing to verse 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our great God and most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word read. And I thank you now for the opportunity to explain and illustrate and apply this portion of scripture. I pray that you would be pleased to help me to preach effectively. And I pray that you would be pleased to help all of those who view this webcast to respond to your word appropriately. I pray that your word will become increasingly dear to us in these days and that as we hear it, we will cherish it in our hearts. Be with all who hear and receive your word today and give us hearts that are ready to obey in whatever area of our lives you choose to address this hour. We pray for our Savior's sake. Amen. On that first Easter evening, the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ were locked behind closed doors because of fear of the Jewish religious leaders. In not a completely dissimilar way and manner, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ find themselves behind locked doors once more. This time, not for fear of the Jewish religious authorities, but this time upon instruction from our own political authorities and likewise because of fear and apprehension concerning the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus. My desire is that as we hear God's word together this morning, that we will know the reality 
of the presence of our risen Lord Jesus Christ with us even here and even now. In this particular portion of God's word, we see that the disciples of Jesus, first of all, received comfort from their resurrected Lord. The passage says that it was the evening of that first day of the week, that day that began with the discovery of an empty tomb, and that day that caused the disciples to first hear the message, he is not here, for he is risen. That day is now drawing to an end. It is now evening time, and they are together hiding in fear behind locked doors. But immediately, the Lord Jesus Christ marvelously and miraculously appeared in their midst. You see, his movements are not restricted by lockdown conditions, and his presence is not governed by locked doors. He appeared in their midst. And it's wonderful that he shows them, according to the passage of scripture just read, his hands and the nail prints which were there, and the side where his side had been pierced by the sword. He did this, no doubt, to demonstrate to them that they were not merely seeing a vision and that he was not simply a spirit, but that he had physically, visibly risen from the dead. And the reality of the presence of the risen Lord gave them considerable gladness and joy. And whereas at one moment they were fearful and apprehensive, now they are filled with gladness and joy. The passage says that after he had said to them, peace be with you, and after he had showed them his hands and his side, that the disciples were overjoyed because they had seen the Lord. I trust today that wherever you are and wherever you may be viewing this webcast, that you will see the Lord, that you will be encouraged by the reality of his presence with you right where you are. The same man who records these words would some years later be exiled to uh, the Isle of Patmos because of his faithful preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there in his isolation, he would say, on the first day of the week, I saw the Lord. I know that many of us are saddened in these days because we are unable to meet together physically. I join you in that, and I long along with you for that time when we can meet together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. My friends, be assured of this essential truth. Our vital spiritual union with Christ and our vital spiritual unity with one another is not compromised because we are only able to meet together virtually at the present time. We have confidence that God is with his people and that the Lord Jesus Christ is present with us even here and even now. In this 
passage, though, we see that the disciples were encouraged not only by the comfort of the uh, resurrected Christ uh, and his presence with them, but they were also comforted by the promises that he has given to them. Uh, twice in just these a few verses uh, read, he said to them, peace be with you. The expression, a peace be with you, actually occurs three times in the gospel according to John. Two times in this particular uh, passage and on an earlier occasion in John chapter 14, verse 27. You see the Lord Jesus appearing in resurrected form to say peace be with you to his disciples was actually in fulfillment of a promise that he had made to them earlier. And they were gladdened and cheered not only by his presence with them, but by the fact that he had kept and fulfilled his promises to them. I trust that in like manner today, that you are learning in new and fresh ways to lean hard on the promises of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said to us, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. We are told concerning our Lord Jesus Christ that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What immeasurable comfort and what inexpressible joy comes to those who hold fast to his promises in times of difficulty and adversity. Oh, see with me today the comfort of our resurrected Christ. But the passage speaks to us not only concerning the comfort of the resurrected Christ, but also concerning the commission of the resurrected Christ. The passage continues. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. What a remarkable commission. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. John's gospel begins with a, a prologue. The initial uh, prologue is uh, verses 1 to 14 of John 1. The extended uh, prologue is verses 1 to 18. The prologue begins with the famous words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, we remember the words, the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And finally, in verse 18, we recall the words, no man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten who was in the bosom of the Father. He has made him now. What was the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why is it that he had been sent? He was sent to reveal to humanity that God is a God who is full of grace and truth. And though no one has ever seen God face to face, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the Word of God incarnate, he 
has made him known. He says then to his disciples, just as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Our commission, like that of the Son, is to make the gracious truthfulness of God known among all the peoples of the earth. And that that God that no man has ever seen might be seen and might be made known in and through his people. Now, how can we do this? Well, we can do it, first of all, through what we believe. It's been very encouraging in recent days to hear reports of how many Christians in many places are standing firm on the promises of God's word. How many people are holding fast to that faith once for all delivered to the saints. How many people are standing firm in their belief on the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, that he was buried, and on the third day was raised again. When we, despite difficulty, when we, despite even a global pandemic, continue to believe God's word and continue to hold to the truth of the gospel, we let him be seen in and through us, and we make him known through what we believe. We make the Father known not only through what we believe, but also through how we behave. Interesting, isn't it? We can talk about what we believe, but what we actually believe is demonstrated most clearly through how we behave. We talk about God as our great provider. If we actually mean that, may we then in behavior, not those who buy supplies that we don't need and hoard them up, but may we be those who, if we buy in bulk at all, do so in order that we might have to share with those who are in need. Let us be those people who, when some spend all of their time watching news 24-7 and going around the internet, following up the latest conspiracy a theory about uh, where the pandemic has come from and uh, where it will ultimately lead. Let us be those who behave appropriately by spending our time with an open Bible, with a humble heart, reading scripture, trusting the Lord Jesus to speak to us through his word. And in those days when people are living uh, a very uh, panicked, uh, fearful existence. Let us demonstrate through our behavior what it is like to maintain a firm trust and a steady, resilient faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we will be fulfilling the commission given by our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. It is a matter not only of believing the right things, but also behaving in the right ways. And it is also not simply a matter of showing that he is a God full of grace and truth, but it is also a matter of sharing with others concerning this grace and truth. That's why it's especially important for us to be spending our days fulfilling the commission of our Savior to make him known. How can I make him known in these days? Well, perhaps you could make a scripture poster that you could display 
in your window for those who walk by or for the postman or the uh, delivery person to see when they come to your door. You can never know how this might be used in a positive way in someone's life. You can pick up your telephone and you can call others and speak to them, not about the pandemic, but speak to them about the hope that you as a Christian have found midst the pandemic. It could be that they will be more ready to listen and respond to what you say in these days than at any other time. You can make good use of technology, perhaps by sending links for messages like this to those in your email contact file, or for those of you who make use of social media, by putting scripture verses and, and hymns and appropriate messages on your uh, Facebook wall or your Twitter feed. You may think that these are just small things. You might even be tempted to think that they are insignificant things. But we are still a people who believe that little is much when God is in it. And so if we are seeking to take every advantage, to take every opportunity to make known the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, surely he would be pleased by that. Oh, this is a remarkable passage of scripture we've read today. In it, we see the comfort of the risen Christ. And in it, we are reminded of the commission of the risen Christ. That he did not simply give them a commission and leave it up to them to fulfill it in the strength of human flesh with the limits of human imagination. Now he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. He gave them not only peace, he gave them power. And with this power, they were enabled to fulfill the commission given to them. I pray that in these days, Langdale Church will not be weakened, but strengthened, that we will not be scattered, but that we will be drawn closer to our Savior and to one another than ever before, and that we will discover when the pandemic is past and the uh, restrictions put in place are eased, that God indeed intended this for good, and that he has used it for his glory and for the good of his people. Would you pray with me just now toward that end? Our great God, our most gracious heavenly Father, it's very kind of you to give us an opportunity like this to share together in the ministry of your word. How we pray that as your people hear this message, that you will remind them of the presence of the Savior and the promises of Scripture and that they indeed will be greatly comforted. And oh, how I pray that you would also remind us of the commission of our Savior, that we would remember that just as he was sent by you, that we have been sent by him to make the gospel known to all people everywhere. Would you be pleased to use Langdale Church as a means of doing that, not only here on this vast estate, but also throughout Dunstable. May many hear the gospel, may many be saved, and may many be brought into the fellowship of this, your church. I know that all of the friends who will hear this message will long to be able to meet together again. We'll long to be able to pray with one another, to share scripture with one another. 
to break bread with one another. We pray that these longings would soon be satisfied and fulfilled, that soon this pandemic will have passed, that soon the restrictions placed upon us will have eased, and that we will be able to meet together to encourage and build one another up in the faith. Until that time, keep your people. Help us to hold fast to you, knowing that you will hold us fast. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I trust you'll look forward to joining us again at this same time, this coming Sunday, when you will have the privilege of hearing a message from our friend and brother, Steve Burton. So please uh, pray uh, for Steve uh, as he prepares and preaches, and then pray for one another as you receive that message from God's Word on the 19th of April, 20. In the meantime, be assured of our love and prayers. And if there's any way in which uh, any of us can be of service to you, do be in touch with Handel and Rick. And if there's any way that we can support them, we are certainly happy to do so. God bless you indeed until we meet again.